Hi everyone, welcome to my view of Akira Kurosawa's Stray Dog in 1949. Here is the DVD, and yes, BFI edition, and my first Kurosawa review. Um, now this is interesting, um, because, you know, Kurosawa, I've been, basically I've been reviewing a lot of Ozu films, and of course, eventually I'll be doing some more, um, well, I'll be doing some Miyazaki reviews, and yeah, Kurosawa, um, I maybe mentioned him a couple times on my channel, um, but never quite um, got around to doing a review, because, you know, I've only seen... Um, well, after this, now I've seen six Kurosawa films all the way through, and um, you know, I've, I've kind of um, I started watching his films in 2014. Um, I watched Yojimbo, was my first one, and um, you know, I'd heard so much about this this guy um, over the years. You know, I just I had to dive in. Um, that was on TV, and then I actually got the um, you know, I thought that was a very good film. Um, you know, who, who knows, I might think it's a great film on a rewatch. You know, I don't think it's a masterpiece, um, and certainly. I much preferred um, A Fist for the Dollars, um, personally, I, I, I prefer Leone as well to Kurosawa, but yes, basically, um, I was very impressed though, and um, you know, I really thought Seven Samurai looked like, you know, one of the best, you know, and um, I've got the Steelbook, um, and here it is, on Steelbook, <coughs> wonderful, wonderful Steelbook, and I watched it, um, you know, in 2014 as well, changed my life, um, one of my very favourite films of all time, um, you know, rightfully so regarded as one of the best um, for me. Absolutely masterful um, from start to finish, and um, you know it's a, it's a perfect epic for me, really. Um, and yes, you know I think you know at that point I thought, wow, this guy knows how to make great films. And then I saw you know the next year, twenty fifteen, it was Akiru and Rashomon. You know I have them both here. I know them both on um, Criterion. Um, they both look wonderful here, especially Rashomon. Um, love them both. And then I saw Hidden Fortress twenty sixteen. Love the film, and um, yeah. I kind of just rewatched some last year, and now this year I rewatched Rashomon again, and uh, for the first time, you know, it's Stray Dog. Um, so really, not much Kurosawa films I've seen overall, you know, and I kind of I've rewatched um, Akira and Seven Samurai and Rashomon, but I haven't really, you know, seen you know quite a lot of them. You know, there's around about thirty Kurosawa, so I need to, to kind of catch up and, and watch them. Um, but yes, it's because you know not a lot of them are actually available, you know, um, on Blu-ray and stuff, um, at least. Uh, cheaply, um, so but yeah, I just thought you know what um, I'd watch Stray Dog on the DVD, you know, today, and um, really intrigued me. You know, it's it's kind of one of the first um, buddy cop films. You know, you could say this this film. It's a film noir, um, which of course was very very popular in the forties. You know, and um, it's kind of just a, in general a thriller. Um, and you know, I was really interested to see you know what Kurosawa would do with this. Um, and yeah. I just think, you know, Toshiro Mifune, um, you know, Takashi Jimura, um, you know, teaming up here um, as, as two cops, two, two police, um, and, you know, in Tokyo, um, and it's post-war, and kind of this, all, all this kind of mood, this atmosphere, but, you know, all, and the kind of, yeah, I just thought um, it really, really sounded intriguing um, when I saw, you know, these two guys, you know, in, in it together, and the kind of basic uh, plot, and uh, the fact that they're two cops, you know, teaming up, teaming up um, kind of thing. I thought, wow, this this could be, I could love this film, and um, you know, it sounds like it could be amazing. You know, really got behind this, got very very hyped um, because the Shimifune is just um, a master actor. You know, no one quite does um, you know kind of animalistic performances quite like him. You know, and that's mainly what you know he's he's more um, known for Rashomon, you know, Seven Samurai that kind of stuff. Hidden Fortress, uh, not so much. He's not you know. Uh, you know, animalistic and that, and uh, yeah, you know, he's also known for with subtle, more subtle ones that I hear with Redbeard. Um, so yeah, great, great actor. You know, on my favorite actors film uh, actors list. Um, but Takashi Shimura, um, I think I prefer. Um, he's even better for me. And both of them in this, and I, I just couldn't wait. And I watched it, you know, and um, yeah, the basic plot. Um, I'm not going to reveal much because um, actually it's kind of convoluted. Here yeah, we'll get to that, but. Uh, to Shuma Fune, um basically this cop, um, and you know he, he basically um, very early on, you know, loses his gun. Someone steals um, his pistol, um, you know, when he's on patrol. And yes, the rest of the film is, is him trying to get this back. Um, and then it turns out, you know, once you know the film go goes on, um, you know, someone gets a hold of it <coughs> and starts killing people. Um, so him and eventually Takashi Shimura's character Sato, um, you know, they, they kind of team up, and it's their job to kind of um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on and a lot of stuff that develops in the plot, you know, involving prostitution as well and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it just goes on and on, you know, with different things unfolding. Um, 
you know, in kind of noir fashion. And yeah, basically, um, it's their job to kind of tra track this, track the gun down because you know it comes across, comes to contact with different people, um, quite a few, and it's it's not all revealed, you know, until you know, um, certainly towards the end. Um, and yes, that is a basic plot, um, a crime, you know, um, noir film um, by Kurosawa, um, who's mostly known for, you know, um, epic kind of samurai films, you know, feudal Japan uh, setting. And um, yeah, he's known for, for his, uh, you know, human dramas as well, like Kiryu and I hear Redbeard and stuff like that. But, you know, a, a, a kind of buddy cop film, you know, a police thriller, you know, very, very um, kind of stand out, you know, in his filmography. And, um, Unfortunately, I was disappointed. I know mean, I say it now. Um, you know, really, really wanted to love this film. You know, I think, um, and it's one of his earliest ones. So it's very intriguing to see. You know, and Rashomon, of course, um, a year after this. And for me, this, unfortunately, um, you know, at the end of the film, um, it wasn't quite a good film. I think it was an average film. Um, a real, real shame. You know, I think um, it was decent. You know, and um, it started off. It got off to a great start. It had some flaws, um, but really great start. You know, the first 20 minutes, so a bit under that. Um, very, very compelling. You know, uh, it was well put together. The editing was very strong here. Um, the Shimmer Funny uh, started off very intriguing. Um, kind of a cool character, um, you could say. And yes, basically, um, as the film goes on um, after this, basically, you've got um, unfortunately a convoluted um, uh, kind of noir film that kind of. Um, Unfortunately, and a lot of the you know noir films do this at times, and footage in general um, places more emphasis on the plot um, than the actual characters, and the plot it, because it's convoluted and the fact that um, you know at times it just wasn't you know that compelling, it suffered. Um, and what could have been a great film um, turned out to be just you know a high average um, with with some great stuff in there and, and some very good moments. Um, you know, and the cinematography overall was great I'd say actually um, mostly it had some flaws definitely and it wasn't you know Rashomon the next year Rashomon just um, I would say now is an absolutely mind-blowing perfection piece of, you know it's absolutely perfect um, you know I cannot flaw that film it is something to behold you know and um, you know of course all the different you know visual storytelling uh, techniques he perfected in, in the now um, this one at times feels a bit you know more experimental um, but it is overall great cinematography, it's quite stunning. Um, the thing that's wrong with this, I think, is the editing, you know, I think. And, you know, a lot of cop films do this, um, kind of, you know, they go for a lot of the more, they're trying to show how mundane, you know, some of the, the activities are. You know, the French Connection does this, and, um, you know, definitely, um, you know, it, it suffers, um, makes the film quite boring at times. Um, this one, you know, it's kind of, there's a lot of overlapping, there's a lot of, you know, cuts, um, in certain scenes in this film, and uh, basically, it really you know taints the film. Um, it's just, ugh. I just kind of wish the film would slow down. Even though you know a lot of the scenes, and when he's walk walking uh, to Shimmer Fern's character, um, basically, even though he's mainly just walking, it would have been even you know, it made it even worse the fact that there was too much <clears throat> quick cuts, um, and it just gets, it just went on for quite a while. Um, you know, a lot of segments in this film, you know, just the editing was a bit messy. Um, you know, it was kind of, it was a bit overdone, over edited, I feel, um, at times. And, um, and just really, um, it kind of bored me at times. It really did, because you know, there wasn't a lot going on. Um, there's, there's a scene, as I say, just just before the 20 minute mark, um, the Shimmer Finney, um, basically, he gets, gets some leads and he starts walking um, through the streets. And um, yes, I get, I get what Chris was trying to do. Here um, and of course, you know, just kind of trying to show how you know as well the, the weather in this is, is used, um, you know, a kind of um, in an interesting way. Uh, Kurosawa always does this, but you know, the summer, you know, the scorch, the scorching, you know, kind of summer, um, you know, the sweat pouring off of everyone and everything like that. And I suppose he was trying to do all this, you know, all these different fades and everything um, to show that, um, to show that as well. It only made the police work, you know, even more tiresome, but. It really doesn't have to be like this in the fact that, in the way that as a viewer, I, I was um, I was quite bored at times, you know, it just went on, literally it went on for eight minutes. And um, of course, um, people walking um, and things going on like that for, for 10, 20 minutes can work perfectly under the right hands, you know. On this occasion, you know, it didn't, um, you know, and there's, there's many, many films where, um, you know, it doesn't have to be 
<clears throat> loads of dialogue, um, and it's all just visual. Just this one, you know, there's certain segments where they are just walking, um, like different characters, and there's a baseball game going on as well later on in the film. And it's just not done as well as it should have been. It comes across um, as quite tiresome, um, and just, you know, kind of halts my <clears throat> engagement with the film, um, with the picture. It, it just wasn't that effective, really, for me. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't, um, you know, kind of walking um, through different locations done that well um, for me personally. And this can be done perfectly, um, just not on this occasion, really, for me. And um, it just really, um, you know, kind of. And then, you know, when when um, you know things start to to keep you know crop up after that, you, you know, with the plot, um, the more and more the film goes on, you know, and mostly, um, you know, in general terms, it just becomes more and more. Kind of, I don't, I didn't really care too much for the actual plot. You know, it kind of, it was very, very convoluted. I feel, you know, in, in a lot of noirs are like this, but this one really felt convoluted. And um, you know, there was definitely a peak, you know, different peaks throughout um, the film. But then it just followed with more, kind of, slightly uninteresting, um, decently put together, <clears throat> decent dialogue um, of scenes where you know it just doesn't really interest me. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, just basically overall, unfortunately. Um, Bit of a disappointing film, and it's another character of uh, Har Haruma or Harami. Um, and basically, she um, she comes into the film, and uh, she's quite annoying as well. Um, I think um, she's not a good character, and um, you know, there's different plots, subplots throughout the film. Um, a lot just keeps appearing, you know, and different things they keep cropping up. Um, and it just I think it loses a bit of focus, and um, you know, a lot of these side characters are just not not very good for me. Um, it's a shame. Kurosawa would, would co-write this, um, and I think the script is decent, um, but overall, definitely got moments where it's just not effective. Um, there's a real peak though of, of character development, you know, actual character development, um, you know, just after the hour mark, for about five ten minutes. Um, it's up um, to Kashishimura's character, his house, um, you know, Sato's house, and you know, you see his family and everything, and it's just really really nice scene, you know, and actually. I start to care more, you know, about these characters. Um, you know, there's some actual real development there. Then it goes back to the plot. Um, you know, it's kind of investigation. The two detectives, um, and just really, um, this film uh, overall, you know, um, I didn't think it was a bad film. It, it was decent. I think it was average. You know, a high average. Um, you know, it had some some really good stuff in there. Um, cinematography, very very impressive overall. But really, for me, this is very very disappointing. Um, Yes, you know it's before Rashomon and all this kind of stuff, um, but I did expect this. This could have been some some great stuff, and it was at first actually. Um, you've got a pretty bizarre but you know, kind of nice and pretty pretty um, you know effective opening credits where you actually see this dog um, you know in the credits. And um, yeah, I think um, it started to to really interest me. Um, I think it was just it was just very very good. You know, in and out of the police station. Um, you know, some pretty decent chase scenes. Um, as the film went on, it just really, um, I think the second half overall is worse um, than the first. And, um, you know, I think there was a peak in the second half of character development. Um, but it just, it's overall, it doesn't quite work a lot of this film. Um, and it's not, it, I think it lacks at times confidence. Other times not, it does not lack um, confidence in you know, certain sequences. Um, but really, it does feel a bit experimental at times. Um, and the plot, you know, isn't overall that engaging at all, um, you know, but the acting um, from Toshima Fune and Takashi Shimura um, is very good at times, um, but these characters, you know, um, I think on paper, you know, the, these two actors being together in a buddy cop film, I thought, wow, when I watched the film, you know, once now I've seen it, I think, ah, oh, what a shame, you know, it could have been, you know, I can't believe these two are in it, um, the main roles and, um, it was this, you know, uh, these characters just weren't that, they weren't great, you know, I think. Um, and rarely did we get any, you know, real meaningful character development. Uh, when we did, it was very short-lived. Um, and we were just kind of there for the ride. Um, Toshima Fune, um, good performance, but not, you know, um, his usual standards of what I've seen. Um, you know, I've, I've seen, he's just so great in, in the other ones I've seen him in. Um, but... Not here, you know, I think, um, even Yojimbo, you know, the worst of the five that I saw before this, um, he gives a brilliant performance in that, um, just brilliant, you know, and some of the, you know, performances, Rashomon, um, Seven Samurai, um, some of the best of all time, 
and this one, you know, and he's, he's still got the cool, cool feeling, you know, and the charm and everything, but the and the style. But it's just, it's not a character and a performance that really is anything special. Um, you know, this film really underwhelmed me um, actually. But you know, I, I have massive respect for Kurosawa, and of course, Kurosawa took a lot from you know John Ford in his style um, and his themes at times as well. And um, yeah, I think. He really um, has definitely influenced me as well, Kurosawa, um, and he's just a great director, you know, overall. He is on my favourite director's list, um, you know, and this review is maybe a bit more negative than maybe any Kurosawa that I'll <clears throat> review that I'll do. Um, you know, I think this is definitely going to be one of my least favourite films, you know, from him. Um, the other ones I've loved, um, slash, really, really liked, um, you know, four of them, you know, original five that I saw, um, you know, they're definitely great films. I'm not going to say, you know, how many of them are masterpieces, but wow, um, you know, he he is a great director overall. When on form, he's one of the masters, I think. Um, so this review, you know, don't let this, you know, you think that um, I don't like Kurosawa. You know, I love Kurosawa, and that's why I'm disappointed as well. With this um, overall, I'd have to give it a sixty-nine percent. Um, I think it's not quite a good film. Um, I really like the ending actually, but you know, overall, I just thought. A lot of this I just haven't, you know, really connected to too well. Um, some segments they are boring, um, in the sense that they're just not compelling um, for whatever reason to do with the editing and the writing, these characters overall, the plot that just becomes more and more convoluted as it goes on. And you know, when films things are kind of wrapped up, and I was paying attention, and um, when things are wrapped up, you know, it just it's just kind of yeah, it didn't have to be that much of a struggle to get there. Um, and the certain segments that I just thought was really unnecessary, a couple of you know tonal breaks as well, a lot of people crying in the film, but you know um, it's it's really the plot and, and the fact that it takes so much emphasis on this plot, you know, over the characters, you know, and, and the usual uh, the visual wowing, um, you know, in the sense that you know um, the Kurosawa de delivers, it, it's still um, it's still at times great at cinematography, but what he does in this is too much, um, it's too plot heavy. Um, and the plot itself, because it's not that compelling and it's a bit convoluted, you know, it really it suffers. Um, and the fact that I just wasn't that compelled by it, I liked it. Um, I thought it was fine. Um, but from Kurosawa, this is you know disappointed for me. Um, nothing special, um, personally. And you know, I, I, you know, with all respect, he's one of the best directors. You know, when on form, but this was really, really underwhelming for me. Uh, what a shame, you know, I think um, this could have been great and it started off great, but it just lost its way, you know, like a lot of um, thrillers can unfortunately do, just for me anyway, forget about the characters, um, just kind of really focus on the plot. If you do that, you have to have a really, really compelling plot. It's well told, you know, and um, this one wasn't really um, too well told. And then you've got, you know, another peak at the end, near the end, um, an action scene, um, you know, some gunplay. But then it leads into, and it's kind of definitely a, a, kind of like a, a standoff. Um, but then it leads into a what can be described as a ruckus, um, and it's not very well put together, unfortunately. And glimmers of what you know Rashomon done so well uh, with this kind of fight, um, you know. And, and yes, there's, there's a samurai film, there's the swords and that, but you know, there's, there's a lot of physicality that's a bit similar to this, um, you know, towards the end, you know, within the flower beds and everything, and um, it's just completely opposite in terms of the quality you know, of this fight you know at times it was hard to make out um you know it was a bit a bit stupid and it went on you know i just didn't you know overall this film doesn't really sustain itself um you know 69 percent from me by no means is that a bad score i think there's, there's a lot to like in this um you know but it's just for me you know i, I, I just thought it was underwhelming overall um you know i think the plot you know really overtakes um these characters and uh there is some atmosphere in there, and there's some themes that you know that are pretty well, um, you know, explored. But for Kurosawa, this is a bit underwhelming. Um, definitely not a masterpiece. One of his masterpieces for me. But you know, I didn't dislike the film. You know, I think um, check it out. You'd probably like it more than I did. And um, yeah, I think um, it's probably going to be my one of my least favorite Kurosawa. But you know, it's it's fine. Overall, you know, he's one of the masters. Um, you know, went on form and. Um, Yes, you know, this was disappointing, um, but, you know, I, I look forward to the rest, you know, of Kurosawa um, reviews I do. Um, you know, he's, 
I love Chris Owen, you know, and uh, and that's it's probably why I was a bit more negative in this one, but it does not mean I don't like him. As I say, he's a master director, and um, you know, it's unfortunate I've kind of started with this film, uh, you know, the reviews, but. Yeah, I'll probably be watching you know, some more soon, slash re-watching um, the ones I know I love, and um, I look forward to that. But yes, thanks for watching my review.